Cry aloud, spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgression, and the house of Jacob their sins. The Middle East is often considered a religiously and socially conservative region, but going against that trend is the city of Tel Aviv. Always socially progressive, it's been dubbed the city that never sleeps. And now Tel Aviv mayoral candidate Nitzan Horowitz could become the first openly gay mayor in the Middle East. It's true, I'm, not go I'm, I'm going to be not only the first gay mayor in Israel, but the first gay, uh, gay mayor of the entire Middle East. This is very exciting. It's also very challenging because this is a country, this is an area with a lot of problems um, concerning the gay community, discrimination, even violence, uh, all sorts of uh, persecutions and uh, intimidations, threats that uh, even personally I uh, experienced. Horowitz is hoping his bid to run Israel's famously liberal city will help homosexuals across the region, where they are widely discriminated against. A former television journalist who, as a lawmaker, has largely championed social issues and advocated for African migrants who have flocked to Tel Aviv, the 48-year-old legislator says prejudice toward gays in the city lingers on, despite its reputation as a liberal bastion. Most of the schools in Israel are blocked to the uh, gay community. All the NGOs of the gay community are not allowed um, in the schools, and most of the kids are not exposed to any uh, explanation or uh, lecture or uh, anything regarding the gay community. So there is lack of tolerance. Israel's military made inroads decades ago by conscripting gay men and women alongside other 18-year-olds for mandatory service. And even the holy city of Jerusalem with a large ultra-Orthodox Jewish population holds an annual gay pride parade. But the gay community hits a roadblock when it comes to the issue of marriage. Gay marriage and civil ceremonies in general that take place in Israel are not recognized by the state. Horowitz, who has lived with his partner for more than a decade, wants that to change. Despite his advocacy for gay rights, Horowitz is adamant that they are not his core platform. Rather, he says he is seeking to improve public services, including education, transport and housing, in a city where costs have soared in recent years. I'm gay, I'm part of the gay community, but uh, the gay agenda is not my main agenda. No, I'm, not, I'm going to be mayor for everybody. And so my three major issues are, first of all, public education, public housing, and public transportation. I'm running on a public-based ad agenda. Many residents don't seem to mind he's gay and feel it gives him a broader perspective. He knows what the people in Tel Aviv, the citizen, needs. And as long as he do that, I really don't care that is gay. Actually, I love it. It um, makes me feel that he uh, know what different people uh, need. The left-wing parliamentarian is not predicted to defeat the incumbent, the well-established ex-fighter pilot Ron Huldai, in the 22nd October municipal vote. But Horowitz remains upbeat, pointing to a recent opinion poll which gave Huldai only a five-point lead. Tell me about this event. Tell you about this event. You know, since ever, since ever, it was a very controversial event, and now it's a welcome event in the Knesset. All MKs want to come. You won't see politicians from from the right wing in Israel, but but they keep silent. They are not speaking against it. Yeah, which is an. Well, it's great because this is uh, much more progressive than the United States. <laughs> מאוד נרגש ושמח לפתוח את המפגש הזה של ראשי הקהילה הגאה בישראל והאירוע הזה מתקיים לרגל פתיחת האירועים השונים בחודש הגאווה ברחבי הארץ ההתרגשות שלי נובעת בראש ובראשונה ממקום אישי 
אם מישהו היה אומר לי פעם שייבחר חבר כנסת הומו גלוי או מחוץ לארון, הייתי חושב שהוא אה, הוזה, ואם אותו אדם היה אומר לי שאני אהיה חבר הכנסת הזה, אז הייתי חושב שבאמת אה, הוא זקוק לאשפוז. אז הנה אנחנו אה, כאן. כן, מה לעשות? Mr. Horowitz, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, your Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, actually mentioned gay people twice uh, in his speeches, once in the United Nations and another in joint session of Congress in the United States. Indeed. The government, including the foreign ministry, the Prime Minister, is sometimes uh, using the liberal atmosphere in Israel regarding gay people in order to explain Israel abroad, to show how liberal is Israel is. In comparison to other Middle Eastern countries, Israel is in a very good situation. Regarding, Uncomparably. Regarding gay people. Indeed. But there is still lots to do here in Israel. Compared to the United States even, I think you guys are leading. Indeed, indeed. But we are always uh, aiming for uh, better things, to, have, to achieve more, in order to make a political change you need to mobilize public opinion. Now, this is not obvious in a country like Israel. We have a lot of groups, we have a lot of religious people, and it's very difficult to bring people together around this idea of equality for gay people. Well, you are very respected uh, in Israeli society, and I think that speaks volumes about Israel. Yes, and we're and here to make it better even. For if God spared not the angels that had sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment, and spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly, and turned the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an ensemble unto those that after should live ungodly, and delivered just Lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. For that righteous man dwelling among them, in seeing and hearing, vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations, and to reserve the unjust until the day of judgment to be punished.